Hi, this is Daniel Gilbert for Jamplay.com. Let this video serve as an introduction for some lessons I'd like to do on some advanced improvisation training. Basically exercises that will help you play over changes, either jazz fusion type changes or straight up traditional jazz changes. Now, since this is pretty much an advanced series, uh, I really would expect you to have command on a bunch of material. You need to know your major scales, minor scales, Dorian, Mixolydian, melodic minor scale, and your seventh arpeggios, major seven, minor seven, dominant seven, and minor seven flat five. Now just moving all that, and that's a lot of material right there, that's why this is an advanced improvisation video. So uh, having a good control in that, what I'd like to do is bring up a whole bunch of exercises that will help you improvise over songs that you see in the real world. The first half of uh, some of these videos will be covering just basic exercises in changing key center and how to address that on the guitar. And then the remaining videos will be dealing with uh, a traditional jazz type chord progression known as the 2-5-1. And that can happen in major and minor. Now, as a matter of fact, I mean, uh, when the video just opened, I was doing a little bit of an improvisation exercise as a sample of something that you might do. And that was uh, changing key centers while remaining in one place on the neck. That's why it's really important that you know at least five patterns of all your scales. So uh, this way, if, if you don't know five patterns of all your scales, you will constantly have to move your hand to address a new key or scale. When you know all the scale patterns, you can stay in one position on the neck. This forces you to be smooth and find really close connections between the key centers as opposed to moving your hand, which makes a very sort of disjointed sound possibly. So really important that you know five patterns of all those scales and arpeggios that I mentioned. And then we can start really applying them to different chord progressions. Now the things that I've chosen, I chose them because I saw these things happening in songs. Now, you know, between musicians there's a little bit of a, a argument perhaps. Some people say, just learn songs and play music. And other people are very into sort of technical exercises and doing all kinds of things like that. I'm a big believer in balance and I think you have to do both of those things. Practicing exercises helps you play songs much, much better. What I've noticed in my life as a musician is that the same harmonic circumstances keep coming up from song to song to song. And then if I sit and isolate those and practice on those, then when I go to play those songs, I have a lot more ideas to bring to the situation. Okay? So again, this is advanced training improvisation exercises. Hope you have a handle on all, your, all the scales that I mentioned and those four arpeggio chord types. And then we can really begin to make some music and manipulate emotion, because that's what music's about. Okay, I'll see you next time. Everybody, I'm Daniel Gilbert for jamplay.com. So here is our uh, video on advanced improvisation exercises. And the first thing that I want to start with is uh, actually just what I was just playing over. And this is the idea of a key center moving down a whole step. Now on my little backup track here, I have D going to C. Now what I'm envisioning here is the entire key center changing. It's not just a D chord going to a C chord. It's really D major going to C major. So in larger context, you, you may have a song where there's a small chord progression in D and then a small chord progression in C and the key center, key center is changing. And that's why you would want to kind of drill that. Again, uh, I've taken these things from, I've noticed in playing a lot of music that these moves happen in so many songs. That's why I want to isolate them.
So the first thing is just playing the major scale off of each one of these. I'm going to go down here. I'll be in second position, and as far as I'm concerned, position is the fret that your first finger is located at. And it doesn't necessarily mean the root is there of what you're playing. And the D major scale. And now what I want to do is I want to locate the closest C major scale without moving my hand. So that one happens to be right here. I guess everybody has different numbers and signifiers for how they think of these patterns. I have numbers, but they may not be the same as yours. So this would be sort of like the D, the C major scale chord shape. Right, sort of built off that C open position one. This one is sort of the A shape, if you relate it back to that one. Another way to look at it is I'm playing a D major scale with the roots on the five and two string. And I'm playing a C major scale with the roots on the five and three string. So your first goal is just play D major and C major. And you may want to do it sort of even when, you know, just leaving a lot of space. Listen to this. So just really slowly kind of play some notes. And then to get really smooth and really get used to connecting these things, it's important to practice playing through them without stopping. So here we go. What I'm going to do is solid eighth notes. I'm in the key of D. Now C. Back to D. eighth notes. And by the way, take that at a tempo that you can do it at. You don't want to chase after the metronome. I'm going to talk a little bit more later on about training with these things. But the first thing is that you absolutely have to make every note. So choose a tempo that you can do that at. That was 127 in eighth notes. You want to try once? So here we go. One, two, three, and. Now the C major scale. Stay in second position. Okay. Yeah, a little taste of that. Now, of course, you can do things like now go back and play all 16th notes. Okay, so that's at 127 also. I mean, you may, maybe you're already able to do that, maybe not. But again, playing 16th notes and not stopping. Work your way up to that. Start with 8th notes, get those fast, and then start with slow 16th notes. You could do the same thing with triplets, of course. Now, physically on the guitar, there's another thing that we have to sort of conquer. Um, you know, guitar uh, is really confusing for a lot of people because the same thing lives in a lot of different places on the neck. So that can be a little bit confusing for people. So now the idea is if you really want to master these things, now I'm going to go up to fifth position. And I'm going to play D major scale with the root on the five and three string. And then I'm going to play the key of C or the C major scale with the root on the six, three, and one string. So now I'm about in fourth and fifth position. Check this out in eighth notes. Okay, that was just an eighth note. Now notice what I'm going to do. I'm going to go up here to seventh position. 
Now I'm going to play D major scale with the root on the 6, 3, and 1 string. I'm going to play the C major scale with the root on the 6, 4, and 1 string. Let's try it out. One, two, three. Now, just uh, again, what am I playing? As far as you know, my thinking is I'm just using the major scale. I am playing licks and sort of phrases out of the major scale, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Now, I just want to demonstrate this idea of doing this exercise in all five patterns. Now, I'm going to go up here to D major with the root on the six, four, and one string. And I'm going to play C major with the root on the four and two or some people include the low six strings. So this is that sort of three note per string. Let's try that there. One, two, three, and. Notice right there how I had a really nice resolution. That's what happens when you keep your scales in the same place on the neck when you're going through changes. You see what's really close from one scale to another, and you also see notes that are in common between the two scales. Like listen to this for a second. Notice I was playing the exact same notes for both scales and because I realized that those notes are contained within both scales and that's kind of a really nice musical device to play with with the listener because it smooths out the chord changes for them when they hear a familiar idea that goes through both of those changes. Now of course they don't know there's key changes in there but they know something changes. Never underestimate the listener. Let's go up here to 11th and 12th position. Now I'll play the major, D major scale with the root on the four and two, and maybe include the low six string. And then I'll play the key of C major with the root on the five and two strings. One, two, three, four. So now what ha uh, you have played it, practice this in all five positions and patterns. And now you can kind of move all over the neck you want to for whatever effect you want to give the listener. You know, just in the general, you know, uh, aesthetic sense of music, the higher up you play on the neck, the more kind of energy uh, to the listener. Middle of the neck, you know, kind of relaxed, lower on the neck has kind of a emotional reaction also. So you want to be able to control the range of where you play because that manipulates the emotion of the listener. Okay? And that's the point of music as far as I'm concerned. So now what you can do is you can play and just sort of be free all over the neck. <laughs> I threw in a couple of bends there. You know, something uh, that also you need to take into uh, uh, consideration is the style of what you're playing over. Right now, this is kind of a bossa nova groove, so I'm interpreting it a, a little jazzy, all right? But I'm really concentrating, I really want you guys to concentrate on just the movements. So you may want to just take sort of a generic beat 
uh, without any kind of uh, you know stylistic bent on it. So you can just really isolate these things and work on it. By the way, when you're working on D going to C, well, that's what I'm doing right here. And uh, you're also working on C going to D because you're resolving back up a whole step. So you're working on a descending as well as ascending, that key center thing. Whew. That is a lot of stuff. Not enough? Okay, one more thing. You know, another thing you can do here is concentrate on this and just use perhaps arpeggios. So let's say I'm going D major seven to C major seven, and I'm just gonna use chord tones of those two chords. I'm gonna go down here in second position. I'm gonna mess around with a D major seven arpeggio, and then changing to a C major seven arpeggio, and I'm only gonna use those tones. One, two, three, four. Again, I think a really interesting way to practice is sort of give yourself limitations. Say, oh, I'm just going to do arpeggios or I'll just do scales. Now, of course, you don't do that when you play music. But when you're practicing, that's really effective. It allows your ear to really focus in on the devices that you're using. And then when you play, you play what it is that you really want to hear. Okay? All right. So work on key centers a whole step apart. Now, the other thing is here, so far, I've been practicing this as major but you could assume that they're Dorian or Mixolydian as well. And there where you're practicing on the three tonalities that really happen a lot in popular music. Major tonality or the major scale, minor tonality, right now Dorian, and dominant ton tonality and dominant seven chord. So let's try this for a second. I'm gonna go down here to second position and I'm gonna play D Dorian and then C Dorian. D Dorian will have its roots on the five and two string. C Dorian will have its roots on the five and three. One, two, three, four. Now that one really sounds like something changes because a lot of notes change between those two scales. Just really briefly, let me go ahead and do D mixolydian to C mixolydian. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay. So there, are, what we did now, we played through D to C with actually three tonalities, major, Dorian, and Mixolydian. Okay, so I think now maybe you understand why I said at the beginning, uh, at the introductory video, that you know you really need to understand all five patterns of everything, uh, that uh, all the scales and arpeggios that I mentioned, so you can really mix it up fluidly. Okay, all right, everybody, uh, work on that. That'll take a while, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.